he's a real uh, superstar in, in, in theoretical computer science. Uh, he got many prestigious awards, uh, and particularly uh, two Gödel uh, prizes for um, fundamental contributions uh, to theory. Uh, he is famous for uh, many of his results, particularly uh, probabilistically checkable proofs. Uh, so this area is study related to, to approximation algorithms. Uh, uh, the topic I talked about it's, it's also related to things uh, Ryan Williams uh, talk, talked about. He's also uh, so so Mario is also known for his work on, on streaming and many 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 uh, other uh, topics in uh, computer science. And uh, today he will talk us about uh, local uh, uh, lemma and and uh, I think efficient algorithms for it. Well, thank you very much for the introduction, um, and I would like to warn and welcome everyone here in the room. Um, and here you see Luke Skywalker in my presentation uh, uh, with the lightsaber. And uh, so what is this? Well, you know, all of us wish that we had like a lemma with which we could prove every theorem. Well, of course, there is no such lemma in, in mathematics. But there are better lemmas, like the Cauchy-Schwarz. You can prove a lot of things with them. And so the Lovas local lemma is one of those extremely useful lemmas. Um, so if you learn how to, how to use it, and you have to, it's really like, you know, you need a, a training for learning that, then um, you can do a lot of things with it. So my goal is to teach you like, how to use this weapon and, um, uh, to your advantage and to prove like, a variety of theorems. Now, as I said, there is a certain scope of theorems that you can prove with the Lovas local lemma, obviously. Uh, and um, I want to first give you two examples to such problems. Um, well, probably all of you know coloring problems, like, um, uh, but here we are going to color hypergraphs instead of graphs. Now, also all of you know what a k-hypergraph is, right? So a two-hypergraph is just a graph. It's just an undirected graph. Like a three-hypergraph is a set system where every set has size three. In general, a k-hypergraph is a set system where every set has size k. So when you color the hypergraph, it means you color the vertices. And your goal is to uh, color every edge well. So what is a good coloring of an edge? So you color an edge well uh, with these two colors if um, so this is bad because it's all one. So you have to see both colors uh, on the vertices associated with that edge. So that's a good coloring. And so the question is, um, like, can we say something like what we can say for graphs? It's well known that for graphs, if a graph has maximum degree delta, then we can always color it with delta plus one colors. So here, the degree of a hypergraph is just um, like the number, like how many edges you see on a certain node. And the maximum degree is, well, maximizes this quantity. And so you want to uh, prove a theorem that if the maximum degree is not very large, uh, then you can uh, color the graph with two colors. Um, and so here is the lemma, or that the task, what we want to prove, that if the maximum degree is not larger than some small constant times uh, 2 to the k divided by k, so this is the main, uh, of course, 2 to the k roughly is what this number is. So if the maximum degree is not bigger than that, then you can color the hypergraph with two colors. 
Now, if I just gave you this problem, you tried to prove it, well, good luck. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's like it's harder than it seems. Now, um, OK, so this is the first problem. And now let me go to the second problem. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I should have memorized the order of the slides. So, so here is just so still to the first problem. So can you color this hypergraph, this three hypergraph, with two colors or not? So do you see a two coloring of this three hypergraph? Well, the edges are, uh, you know, this circle. So it's like the set of these three nodes and then these lines. So many of you might know this famous picture. This is the so-called Fano plane, which arises from uh, finite projective geometries. Um, so OK, so that's a homework. I am not telling you if, sorry, or you have I mean, solved it. Yeah, yeah, this is a homework. So does it mean that we should submit? Uh, no, no, it just means you have to think about it, and if I have extra time, I will ask someone if managed to solve it. So, but if you already see the solution and it's two minutes to tell, then please, please tell now. I, uh, so, uh, of course, it's a finite problem, right? So, it's, um, it's solvable. Uh, OK, so now here is the other problem I want, to, I want to talk about. So the other problem, uh, I don't know how many of you know uh, knows Ramsey theory. So uh, like a whole bunch of people, how many don't know Ramsey theory? OK, so some don't. That, but even if you don't know Ramsey theory, you know that if you have like a party where there are six people, uh, and so I am just drawing a little picture for that, that so this person knows this person, uh, and this person does not know this person, so edge means they know each other. So in every party of six, either there are three mutual uh, strangers or there are three mutual acquaintances. So you have probably heard about this friendship theorem of maybe it comes from Erdős. Uh, it again, it's, it's actually, it's very easy to show this. It's actually, you have to think a little bit if you have never thought about it, but it's, it's very easy to show. Now in general, you can, so it, it says that the Ramsey number of 3, 3 is 6. As a matter of fact, it could be 5, but the same does not hold for 5. So among 5 people, you can draw like a graph where there is no free triangle or like a complete triangle. So there is no an empty triangle or a full triangle. So you can draw. As a matter of fact, which graph is that on five nodes? Now coming to think about it. So the cycle or the star, which is also the cycle, right? It's just drawn differently, right? Um, so, so the Ramsey number R33 equals six, and we know that. However, uh, now if we were to ask like so, what is the smallest company such that we can conclude that either six people mutually know each other or six people are mutually strangers, then the answer is not known. As a matter of fact, I think it's tried by computers a lot, and the best we know is that somewhere between 102 and 165. So these, these are the Ramsey numbers. Some of them are surprisingly known. For instance, R39. But many of them are not known. And, here, and the uncertainty, as you see, as we go to larger numbers, are quite large. 
So here only a factor of 10, but as we go to even larger numbers, then it's even larger. Okay, so here is another problem. Okay, so first about the Ramsey numbers, just a little information that if you have ever heard about the Ramsey theory, you all know that the Ramsey numbers are actually finite. Because it's not even clear, right, that, it, that there is any number of people such that either six know each other mutually, mutually meaning everyone knows everyone, or six are mutually strangers, so it's not even clear there is a large enough number such that that would hold. But actually, it's not only that we know that there is, but also there is a, a bound which you can prove inductively. And if you have never heard about Ramsey theory, then again, this is a good exercise. It's, it requires a little mathematical thinking to to actually to prove this. However, what I want now to, to focus on is the lower bound. So is there a cons like, like for, for three, three, five, we know that we, we have this construction, this little five cycle, right? For three, three, we have a construction. So we, in order to give a lower bound on, a, on the Ramsey, Ramsey number, we have, to, we have to give a construction. So how do we give a construction for, for instance, the RKK? Uh, or when the first, I am restricting the first to three, so to R3K. And actually, there are constructions, and these constructions show that RKK ought to be at least uh, square root of 2 over E, so that's just a constant, times K times 2 to the K over 2. So it's actually it's exponential in K. This, this is, by the way, for K equals L, what is this roughly? Uh, uh, just quickly, what is, uh, sorry? Is it 2 to the k? It's almost, it's, it's, it's a, you are on a good track, but it's not 2 to the k. Sorry? Uh, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, someone said that it's 4 to the k, right? 4 to the k divided by like square root of k or something like that. Um, so, um, so, it's, so we know it's exponential, but so this is the upper bound and this is the lower bound, so you see the huge gap, 4 to the k versus square root of 2 to the k, right? And so for 3, we know that the n for 3k, the, well, this number should be quadratic in k. And that, okay, so this is another problem, this both are construction problems, and actually both constructions, again, come from the Lovas local lemma. So now I hope that, that I have demonstrated that like two very different sounding problems have the, so the Lovas local lemma just can handle these, and so let's see what it is. Um, okay, so let's, let's first just try to think like how, how you would solve like these both problems. Well, one trial, and that's Erdős's, that was Erdős's favorite trial, is to use the random method or the probabilistic method. So probabilistic method means that you pick a random color. For instance, consider the hypergraph problem, and this slide only concerns the hypergraph problem. So consider a random coloring and try to show that a random coloring with, prob with positive probability is a good coloring. Um, 
Well, actually, no, I'm sorry. It also concerns the Ramsey graph, right? So in the Ramsey graph, the same idea, that pick a random graph and show that with positive probability it's going to be a Ramsey graph. Uh, so in order to do so, we notice that um, if you want to use this probabilistic approach, that what, all what we have to do is to exclude certain bad events. So what are the bad events? Well, in the case of hypergraph coloring, the bad event is if the ice edge is not well colored. So if it is, so meaning it's monochromatically colored, then that's a bad event. So how many such events do we have to exclude? Well, as many events <coughs> as the number of edges. So we need to avoid all of them. Now in the Ramsey graph, it's, it's a little harder to say how many of the bad events there are, but in the case of hypergraph, and this is what this slide does not say, a bad event, what, what would be the bad event in the case of a hypergraph? Ramsey graph. I'm saying a case of a Ramsey graph. Exactly. So you are picking a certain set of K people, and if they are mutual strangers or mutual friends in this random hypergraph, meaning that there are either we see all edges or all non edges between those K, uh, then, then that's a bad event. So how many such bad events do we have? That's basic combinatorics, right? So how many? And choose K, right? So again, so, <clears throat> so here we see that, that um, like there is some similarities because what we, have, what we want to exclude is a set of bad events. Now, there are obvious ways of going about it. Um, and um, the first actually that's the pinnacle of the uh, random method, is the union bound. So if the bad event, if it happens so that the sum of the probabilities of the bad event is just less than one, then obviously they leave out, then we can just avoid all the bad events, and there is a good event. So, so namely, if all the bad events have probably, if we have d bad events and all of them have probability one over d, then, um, then we are winners. Now, well, it's just not gonna work out in our cases in, in for those two problems. Now, here the problem is that we have too many bad events, and that would just put a very, uh, so this one over D would be just very small. So the events would have had to, like, very small probability. They, they should have very small probabilities if we want to use this, if we have many. Um, but if actually notice that there is a miracle occurs, when we know that the events are independent. So if all the events are independent, then a huge miracle occurs. Then actually it does not matter what the probability of each individual event is, as long as they all have probabilities less than one, and they are all independent, then there is there, then we can avoid all the bad events. Actually, what is the probability that none of the bad event occurs in the case of independence? Product of one minus pro probability AI, right? And since 
all the terms in the products are po in the product are positive. Everything is then the product itself is positive. So the so the law yeah. Uh, you are right, and thank you very much. You see, you are the only one who caught this, uh, and probably no one wanted to embarrass me, but indeed, it has to be an intersection and not a union. Uh, so I apologize. Um, uh, and in both cases. Of course, if you think of the, the Morgan rule, you can say that the union of, um, I mean, one minus the union of AIs, but, um, okay, so, so here is, and here is, here is okay, right? Here is, here is indeed, this is how the formula should look. Um, so let, so, so now um, we have, we have a bunch of events, like we have n events. Uh, I'm sorry, I apologize. That's, I know it's annoying when I flip these slides. Um, so, um, so we have like very many events, but they are like mostly independent. Well, not everyone independent from everyone, but for every event, the number of events <coughs> that are not independent from it is at most d. Now, actually here I cheated a little bit because what I should really say is that for every event, there are d events such that if you look at all the other like n minus d minus one events, so all the events that are neither this D nor itself, and if you look at those events, then, and if you look at the entire sigma algebra generated by those events, then AI is independent from the entire sigma algebra, not just like pairwise from each uh, the others. So there, there has to be like this full independence, but um, as we will see in a moment in the settings that we are considering that holds. So again, the, so what you have to remember is that if we have at most d other events that depend on AI, and then um, and the probability of each AI is now, well, instead of one over d, so here is our penalty that we are looking at like infinite, I mean, just not infinite, but a large number of events. Uh, this, this factor of E is what we are losing compared to the union bound. So, so we have like the event has the uh, other events that matter for, from that event point of view, all the others are independent and that holds for every event, then we can almost treat like as if locally it was the union bound, except we are losing a factor of, a factor of E here. Uh, and so if every probability is less than one over E times D plus one, and notice that in this formula, what you should be happy about is that this formula does not contain N at all, then the probability of the, then we can avoid all these events. Now, um, the setting, so this is a theorem in probability theory. It's abstract probability theory. It talks about events and, um, but in the setting we are using, well, it is still probability theory, which, which I am talking about, but it's closer to the practical applications. Um, so, how, so, when, so when is this um, situation, when does this situation occur, when you can use the Lovas local lemma? Well, here is a very typical situation when it occurs. 
So let's assume that we have a bunch of independent random variables, like, for instance, a, a random variable is if this node of a hypergraph is colored with 1 or with 2. Right? So with probability 50%, I am coloring that node with 1, and I am coloring that node with 2. And so now I'm looking at another node, if I am coloring it with 1 or coloring with 2. I mean, these two random variables are completely independent of each other. Right? So each node to each node, I have, like of the hypergraph, I have a different random, I have a random variable taking values 1 and 2, and the, these are all independent from each other. Now, so if, if I have these random variables, and now the event AI only depends on like some subset of these random variables. So for instance, if I have an edge in my hypergraph, where clearly it does not matter if this edge is, I mean, if, if this edge is well colored or not, it depends solely on how I am coloring the nodes of that edge. It does not depend on how I am co coloring the nodes outside. So if every AI depends on, on a certain set of variables, then what uh, this, uh, then the uh, events that are not independent from AI can be found by looking at just simply the uh, underlying variable sets. Like if the underlying variable set from, with, of A1 intersects the underlying variable set of A2, then these two events are going to be dependent. And if they are disjoint, then they are certainly independent. Moreover, clearly, if I am looking at the set of all other events that are disjoint from A3, then the sigma algebra they generate, because these rely only on completely like, like random variables that are independent from the underlying random variables here, then this entire sigma algebra is going to be independent. But what you, what you need to take home from this is that intersection means dependence, and, and disjointness means independence. Right? So, and, that's, this is, and this is the most typical setting in which the LLL used, and that's called the variable setting. It was clarified by Moser and Tardos uh, in this nice crisp form. So let's see how we are now going to use the Lovas local lemma to show our theorem for hypergraphs. Um, so, again, what we want to show is that a hypergraph is too colorable if, it, if every edge is contained in less or equal than 1 over e times 2 to the k minus 1 divided by k hyperedges. Um, so for the proof, we only need to compute two quantities, and that's it. So the quantity, so the first quantity, is the probability of the bad event. And the other quantity we need to compute is the number of neighbors of a bad event. OK, so what is the number of, what is the probability that an edge is badly colored? Uh, um, I think I haven't asked that <laughs> previously. I asked a couple of questions, but I think we haven't computed that, right? So what is the probability that an edge under a random coloring is badly colored? It well, it's that, right? So, <laughs> so you demonstrate you can read, right? <laughs> but. Um, so in mathematics, every, everything comes with an explanation. 
Right? So can you give an explanation of this expression? Yes, yeah, so there are two bad events if everything, if all nodes are color one or all nodes are color two, and uh, so that's the number of bad events and the total number of events on that edge is two to the k. So it's two over two to the k. Uh, and so what is the number of neighbors? Well, the number of neighbors where every node has so many hyperedges uh, sitting on it so now a hyperedge well contains k nodes, so we just have to multiply k with well the number of with this number. And so of course this number was created such that then this k, when we multiply, disappears. And so what we have is that the d is less or equal than one over d times two to the k minus one. And of course, this whole number was created such that so now the condition, as always, has to be that this times this time, times E should be less or equal than 1, which it is. Right? Of course, I deviously created this number this way, but that's always the case that first, when we want to solve a problem with the Lovas local lemma, we don't know what we are shooting at, so we just kind of compute what the best the Lovas local lemma gives us. And so this is the one, and then when we show the proof to the audience, we already say, okay, so this is the theorem. Um, okay, so let's see the Ramsey number question. So let's first so recall that we wanted to prove two things about Ramsey numbers. Um, so the first is that the RKK is greater than this ugly expression. May I, may I ask you about, sure. about the previous result? So do, do you know any, any proof of this without using a flawless local lemma? Well, so that's a very good question. So that's a very good question. I don't know any proof, and that would be very interesting to find a proof for the following reason. Yes? Yeah. How far is it from local, uh, from local So is there any local model? Well, um, OK, so, the, um, so, we, um, so there is a lower bound, right, which is, so the, certainly the 2 to the k is there, so that has to be there, but I am not sure about what, so 2 to the k times some polynomial of k, but I don't know exactly what the bound is. But, so, talking about the, your question, um, so it would be very interesting, for, okay, so let's start like this, that for graphs, we know that if the maximum degree is d, then we can color it with d plus one colors. Now, how about three hypergraphs? So for three hypergraphs, if the maximum degree is delta, um, then we know that it, we can color it with some constant times square root of delta number, uh, uh, colors. But I don't know what the best bound for this constant times for this constant, and the Lovas local lemma gives one, but if you could somehow do something different, then you could beat the, the so then you could determine the exact constant. So the, for the coloring lemma, the, the Lovas local lemma always gives something good, but might not be optimal, and you, and you don't want to completely drop the Lovas local lemma. You just want to unite it with some other arguments to get stronger results. So let's get back to Ramsey. So in Ramsey, for, for Ramsey, um, again, you want to use uh, the random method. So 
for the KK, since the independent sets and the cliques are symmetric, then again, you want to just check, so what happens with the random graph where every edge is there with 50% probability. And so that we have discussed that the bad event is, a bad event is that we are looking at a set of K nodes, again, I apologize, a set of K nodes, and we look if it's a clique or if it's an independent set that's terrible for us. And so, and so this is a bad event, and so we want to maximize N such that we can still avoid all the bad events. So somehow, um, okay, so and we said that the number of bad events is N choose K, so you see that the larger N is the less chance we have to uh, avoid all the bad events. So what is the maximal N? Um, so the probability of bad event is two, 2 divided by 2 to the k choose 2. Now is there anyone who disagrees with me? Because you see that sometimes I am hiding errors intentionally on my slide. No, just kidding. It was not intentional, but <clears throat> uh, your colleague just pointed out, but uh, there could be an error. So is it... So why is it 2 divided by 2 to the k choose 2? So it's just each edge, right? It's so, so, the, so, I, so if you look at k points, how many edges you see there? Well, two, uh, k, uh, k choose 2 edges. And so each edge has a chance of being there or not being there. So the total number of events on their on those k edges is 2 to the k choose 2. Now, what are the bad events? Well, there are two bad events, that either all the edges are there or all the edges are missing. So it's 2 divided by 2 to the k choose 2. So, okay, so the probability we have. Right? Now, how many neighbors does a, a bad, a, an event have? I'm sorry? Well, so a neighbor, okay, so what is a neighbor? Well, an event, again, an event is that we see um, like an or a clique or an empty set on these K nodes. And so another, another event is that on another set of K nodes. So when do such two events have anything to do with each other? So that's, so that's the neighbors, right? Sorry? When there's a combination so they, there have to be a common edge. It's not enough just to share a point, right? If two cliques share a point, then it's still independent if, you know, one is a clique or independent or the other is a clique or independent. So they have to share two points. So we have to count the number of sets that share at least, maybe more, at least two points uh, with this set of size k. And so that's basic combinatorics, right? Because so these two points we can choose, we can choose k choose two times, and the remaining points, and of course they can also be here, uh, we can choose n minus, k, n minus 2, choose k minus 2 times. So these two points are now out, and so n minus, choose, n minus 2, choose k minus 2. Now this is an over-calculation, of course, because if it intersects in three points, then we calculated it three times. But, well, it's an upper, upper bound for the neighbors is enough for us. And so again, um, again, what we do is just, we take the product of these two numbers 
and uh, we multiply it, so this is one, this is the other, we multiply it with E and we see if it's less than one. And if it is, then we can conclude that we can avoid all the bad events. So now the question is, what is the smallest n for which, I mean the largest n for, the, for which this is still less than one? And I don't do the calculation, but it turns out that the largest n is exactly this. So you see I, I have the elegant way out of not <laughs> burdening you with these calculations, but you see hopefully the principle that all what we had to do is to calculate this. I mean, I'm sorry, again, I, I guess. Um, just to calculate this number and this number and then just do the product and then we are happy. So, so it sounds like you can just turn on the mellow music and so now you know everything and just relax. Right? So, um, well, not quite. You know, because like the life would be beautiful if you just always had to multiply two numbers and then everything <laughs> comes out in mathematics. And so, so there, is, there are some more intricacies to the Lovas local lemma than that. So what is that? Well, so far we were in the lucky situation that every event had the same probability and every event had the same number of neighbors. Um, now, if we are looking at the problem of the Ramsey number R3K, then this is not the case anymore. Recall that in R3K, we want to avoid triangles and we want to avoid independent sets of size k. So there are two types of events that we want to avoid, and those two types of events obviously have different probabilities. Like what is, so now we make, it, it is just a little change that now we put every edge into our random graph with probability p, instead of with probability half. So that, that just won't kill us. However, um, okay, so let's see first, let's try to verify these two probabilities. So what is the probability that on three nodes I have a triangle? It seems my train has arrived, so at least in Hungary this is, this is the sound in the railway station uh, usually. Uh, so on three points, what is the probability that we have a triangle? If every edge is there with probability P. So you are asking us again to read. So I are asking again yeah. to read, but please prove it, right? <laughs> Trivial, right? It has three edge. I, I just don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> Okay, so three edges, right? All of them has to be there, so it's P cubed, right? Okay, so now how about the independent set size? The probability that on K points we see an independent set. What is the probability of that? Well, again, you need to read like it's this one. Um, and so where does this one minus P comes? Well, because the edges are there with probability P, so the non edges are there with probability one minus p, and in like as, and we have like k choose two have to be non edges. So this is the probability. And so a t, so this t just refers to the particular triangle, and s just refers to the particular independent set. Now let's see what is the number of neighbors of a t and b s. Well, what is the number of neighbors of a triangle? 
So the number of neighbors of a triangle, well, there are some other triangles that meet that triangle, and there are some independent sets that meet that triangle. So the other number of other triangles, well, again, if two triangles just meet in a corner, that's, that's not really a meeting. Those, they, whether they are there is still independent, so they have to meet in an edge. Uh, the triangle has three edges. Um, and so here I am generous because like the remaining point, so then it means an edge plus a point, and the remaining point can be chosen, chosen in at most n ways. So in fact, this ha also has to be an inequality. So it's less or equal than 3n. Now here I am even more generous because here I am just throwing in like all possible independence, as they say that they are all neighbors. Now for, for, for BS, for like an independent set of size k, like how many triangles does it have as neighbors? Well, again, a triangle has to share an edge, so there are k choose two edges, and then the remaining point can be chosen, actually it should be n minus k, right? Or, no, n minus two, that's right. Because, of course, the remaining point can also, of the triangle can also be from the independent set. And again, I just generously throw in the, or the neighbor. So here we see a situation where like the probabilities are different and the number of neighbors are different. Um, and so it's exactly four. Uh, so stay tuned for the rest in the coming 50 minutes, which, which, which starts in 10 minutes. Right?